There's a common misconception circulating about GLP-1 drugs, suggesting that basically they can replace exercise, and it's easy to see why. Is there a practical way to lose unwanted pounds? The idea of a magic weight loss pill has been part of pop culture for ages. While it's true that GLP-1s can lead to weight loss without exercise, the notion that going to the gym is pointless when on GLP-1 is a myth. The truth is, GLP-1s aren't a magic solution, but there is some amazing science behind the impressive results people are seeing. And exercise plays a crucial complementary role. In this video, I'm going to break down the science and explain how GLP-1s and exercise can work together to deliver the best possible results. I'm Chelsea and welcome to Shapeshifting. To explain why GLP-1s and exercise are so linked, let's first talk about exercise by itself. It's up to you to see that your body gets the activity it needs for better physical and mental health. The basic idea is that burning more calories through physical activity than you consume should lead to weight loss, right? Well, it is not that simple. Although there's evidence that consuming more calories than you burn leads to weight gain, exercise to burn those calories just doesn't seem to drive weight loss as effectively as people expect. Our metabolism is much more complex and our bodies are highly efficient at conserving the energy burned during exercise. Genetic studies also show that obesity is often tied more to eating behaviors than physical activity. Calories are burned slowly through exercise, while they can be consumed pretty quickly, stacking the equation against those who are overweight. And while just move more sounds easy, anyone who's tried it knows it is not that simple. There are other often overlooked barriers to exercise, especially for those with limited access to resources. For some, the cost of a gym membership or equipment is just out of reach, while for others, finding the time to exercise is an equally significant barrier. It often raises the dilemma of balancing personal well-being with other personal or professional responsibilities. While researching for this video, I realized that we often focus too much on weight loss as the primary outcome of exercise, overlooking its broader impact on overall health. It is a powerful tool for overall well-being, not just a number on a scale. I enlisted Dr. Vernon, a former hospital physician with a background in pharmacology and health economics. First, this episode is about exercise and GLP-1s. And there are a number of misconceptions we need to get to the bottom of. So the first one, you can't outrun a bad diet. It's not about the weight you lose. You can't lose weight with exercise alone. It's about the health benefits you get with the exercise. Second, GLP-1s are not a magic bullet. They're used in combination with a healthier diet and an exercise program that works for you. But they're complementary. Third, it is not shameful to be overweight. It's not laziness. The mounting evidence shows that actually that is wrong, it's outdated and it's oversimplified and the stigma around it is, is unacceptable in this day and age, frankly. As we know, GLP-1s offer rapid weight loss, but that speed can come at a cost, muscle loss. I asked Vernon about this as well. So during periods of extensive, significant weight loss, Anywhere up to about 30% of your weight can be lost from lean muscle. If prolonged over a long period of time, that can also affect bone health and bone density. So that's the bad news. The good news is we understand there's this potential for losing muscle mass and there's things we can do about it. So a fitness program that is personalized to you, makes sense and fits in with your daily activities and your routine, particularly one that includes resistance training. It will help maintain your muscle mass and it will help you keep the weight off. This should be combined with a high protein meal intake if possible and that part of that healthy balanced diet. It should also be noted that many people um, on GLP-1s report a really positive change, right? So as they begin to lose weight, and they start to enjoy maybe even some exercise. 
you can get into a positive cycle, right? It doesn't, you don't have to start running marathons tomorrow. It's the little things that count to begin with. That sense of uh, success is, is, is an affirmation. It's a positive reinforcement to continue losing weight maintaining your health and in fact improving your health outcomes and it gets you into a positive cycle. I looked into a study that Vernon mentioned. In this clinical study participants were divided into four groups placebo, exercise alone, GLP-1 alone and GLP-1 with exercise and the results showed that while both the GLP-1 group and the combination of GLP-1 and exercise achieved similar weight loss the combo group experienced far greater benefits. Not only did they see an increase in cardiorespiratory fitness and quality of life, they also had fewer instances of gastrointestinal issues. This highlights the powerful positive cycle GLP-1s can create. By aiding in weight loss, they make it easier to engage in physical activity, which then amplifies the physical, mental and emotional benefits. In addition, the combination group had a greater reduction in fat mass than GLP-1 alone, as well as an increase in fat-free mass. So with an appropriate amount of regular exercise, muscle mass can be maintained or restored. The exercise regime in this study followed the World Health Organization's recommendations on physical activity for health and consisted of a minimum of 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic exercise or 75 minutes per week of vigorous intensity aerobic exercise, or an equivalent combination of both. This equals just about 10 to 20 minutes a day, which is much more reasonable and potentially easier to maintain than 30 to 60 minutes. And more might not even provide further benefit. On the other hand, eating less whilst using GLP-1s can result in lower energy levels and fatigue, which can itself make exercise harder. So everyone needs to find their own level of exercise and calorie intake whilst on GLP-1s. This raises interesting cultural and social questions about how we view ourselves and our relationship with exercise and diet while using these treatments. Many people I know rely on weight loss as a measure of success, believing that achieving a certain number on the scale equates to being healthy. However, with GLP-1 treatments, there is an opportunity to shift that perspective. Instead of focusing solely on weight loss, these treatments can also encourage a deeper introspection into overall health habits. As GLP-1s help with physical changes, they also prompt us to reevaluate how we approach long-term health and fitness, moving beyond just the aesthetic or numerical outcomes. To sum it up, while exercising alone can save you money, it requires countless hours, mental resilience to overcome long-term psychological hurdles and a lot of physical effort. On the other hand, using GLP-1s may lead to successful weight loss, but can also come with potential side effects like gastrointestinal issues, muscle loss, and unexpected changes in body shape. However, the combination of GLP-1s and even a short daily workout offers unique benefits from both GLP-1s and exercise while minimizing negative effects. Keep in mind that GLP-1s aren't for everyone and it is important to consult with a medical professional. If you feel comfortable, I would love to hear your exercise and weight loss journey stories in the comments. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss our latest content. We have more episodes on GLP-1s posting soon. Millions of people are now living in a world where managing weight is no longer an uphill battle. One in eight Americans have tried medications like Ozempic and Wagovi. GLP-1s offer immense potential for weight loss, a real chance at healthier living.